Okay, now it's in time. Then happy um welcome everyone to my talk about the complexity build up using C modules, a case study. I'm trying to shoot. Um, and then there is my email address. And if you have questions, you can send problems to here or you can send problems in the Discord channel, which is suggested by the organizer organizers. First of all, this talk consists of three parts, the introduction part, the case study part, and the possible improvement part. For the introduction part, first, we will introduce the modules briefly. We only introduce the briefly. We wouldn't touch any grammar details, some semantic rules. We, we don't do that. We only do some only very, very basic introducing. Then there is uh, introduced about the complexity theory. It tells why we would think modules will speed up. Then we will talk the impact of modules on the combination model. And we will talk about the inline functions and templates and how will they impact the compression speed. Following is the case study part. First of all, we will talk about case study the case. And we will tell our test environment, our measuring method, and the experimental results, and of course, the analysis. In the third part, we will uh, tell some possible improvements in the future. The first is the possible improvement on the component side, which are possible to be done in near soon. And the possible improvement on the library side, which gave suggestion to the people who are writing a module-based library. Then the third is the improvement in the longer term in the component side, which is possible by might not be implemented in short time. Okay, the first part is the introduction about modules. Then what are modules? Not directly, modules can be divided into named modules and the header units. And named modules can be compiled into object files while header units can't. The study talks about the named modules only. So if I don't mention especially, following all the talk, when we say modules, we are referred to named modules. And there is a note about the header unites because I guess some people would be old. That's why header unites are modules. Wouldn't the header unites be a unite, right? Uh, it is literally a unite. It is old like the modules. There is a note that technically header unites are single side the translation unites. It is a single side by the compiler. And the declarations raising header unites are attached to global modules. Global module has a low name. So this is the reason for the name of the modules. But let's not be pedantic in this talk. So I wouldn't mention this before the later in this talk. Then with modules, we can import our dependencies import instead of including them. As the right hand side example shows, here we import std and we can uh, call the function in the STL. And a module can consist of multiple module units. It, it, it may be what people imagine because we may imagine that each header is corresponds to a module. It is not true. A header can consist of multiple module units. And with modules, the project organization can be different with the prior style with the headers. For example, this is a travel example, uh, which I didn't mention the details. Here, the full point H and bar point H declare some declarations. And the full point CVP and the bar point CVP implement some declarations. This is travel, right? And the full point H will be included by full point CVP and the main point CVP. So the code in the full point H will be compiled twice, so the bar point H. However, it can be different if we implement it as modules. 
Here we can say we combine full point H and full point CPP into full point CPM. So that's bar point CPM. Um, know that in this talk, when we say something, some file under with point CPM, it indicates that this file is a module interface unit. It is slightly different from what MSVC used. MSVC used the point IXX, but this might not be a big deal in this talk. Then we need to compile star point CPM into pre-built module interface so that the other unit can impose them. Now the code in full point CPM and the bar point CPM will be compiled once. So we save two compile time for two unit. Then let me discuss why we will think that we will get faster compilation after we use modules. In an ideal model, in the right-hand side, there are n headers and m sources, and every source file requires every headers. And for simplicity, let's given that each header and each sources without header will require the same time to compile. So the complexity to compile this project will be O m multiply n. And similarly, if there are n module units and m sources for the same project, we module not write it. If there are n module units and m sources and each sources require each module. And each module unit and each source files will require the same time as the previous one. So the complexity will be O n plus m. This is an ideal model, but it shows some the uh it shows the complex theory. If we are in not, uh, we are not in such a ideal model, the complex theory is still hold because the complex theory is about the upper point of the complexity. However, this is a traditional theory that why we will think modules will faster. But the complexity theory is, the, it has some drawbacks. The complexity, the complexity theory is correct, but it is too rough so that the users can fit it if their codes are not so large. It ignores some important details points. For example, it, Ignores the compiler optimizations, uh, some um, language features for inline functions and templates, and so on. Know that in this talk, when we use inline as an adjective, we mean the inline semantic in the language side. When we use inline as a verb, we mean the compiler optimization technique inlining. Uh, this may be important. Yeah. So here, it tells the impact about the optimization, nice functions, and templates. Here is another example to show the difference for the compilation process. In this example, we will have only one header or one module unit called foo. And in the example, we have only one header called foo in the above example. And all the dependent codes are put in the full point edge, and there are many source point CPP who include it. And after the process, the code from full point edge will be copied, will be pasted into each source code, and they will be compiled many, many times. However, with the however, with the modules, we are we are not needed to that. Uh, with modules, there are only one compilation in for full point PCM, uh, as you can see in the following diagrams. But what will happen with optimizations? With optimizations, the compiler need to save function bodies as much as possible to perform IPO. The interprocedure optimizations which will do optimizations close function bodies. There are two optimizations in the compiler. One is the 
intra procedure and inter procedure. The first one will only do optimization to within the function, but IPO will do optimizations across the function bodies. However, primarily the uh, fun however, primarily the IPO in the compiler now is in line. There are other kinds of IPO like function specification, but might not be significant. And it is unacceptable to her the runtime performance for compile time performance, right? Because when we talk about C++, we talk about the performance in the most of the time. So when we import more due wasting optimizations, we can't say, oh, we can deny, we can deny or close the module boundaries. The code function bodies in other modules must be imported and the compiler will optimize them as well and uh, they will be kept until in lining. So with optimization, the compilation process will look like this. Know that the through the code from through point CPPM will be generated for each source point CPP until after in lining. In the in the diagram, we can say that people, uh, yeah, know that there is another key point. With optimizations with modules, we can still get some benefit from uh, optimizations after in lining and the backend optimizations and kernel generations. We can skip such redundant compilation. However, however. The optimizations before in lining and in lining itself takes a lot of time generally. So the speed up wasting optimization is significantly less than or zero. Uh, following up, let's talk about the inline function impact. The inline function bodies will be imported to even in O0 according to the requirement of ABI because inline has special um, semantics and it impacts the ABI. So before we um, change the API requirement, the inline function must be kept even we are in O0. And we can see this in this example. There is a module foo. We declare module foo in full point CPM and we export an inline function foo. And in, in use point CPP, we import the foo. And in the right hand side, we can see the generated code. We are in OZL, but we can still see the function body of foo in use point CPP. Right? This means that. In this case, uh, we wouldn't get a lot of speed up. The finally is about the template impact. We said many times the code in module or the code in header, blah, blah, a lot of such things, but this is not a strict, uh, but let's not forget it. Let's, not, let's forget it. However, it is anti-intuitive if we write template in the module. The templates will be instantiated only if they are used. So if they are used in the import T, the generated code live in the import T2. See this example. In the full point CPM, we, we declare a module through and we export a template function. But we think the generated code for full point CPM, there is nothing. All the codes for this project and lives in the code for user point CVP. Then, um, then here is the part for introduction. We introduce something about the compilation speed and the compilation model. Following up, we will see this case study. We will see some numbers. And the first, let's introduce the project. There are think. A simple library itself is reflected into a named module completely. And we can get this case by the GitHub link in the bottom of the PPT or in the bottom of the slide. And a thing structure of this project is lives in the right hand side. Um, the library itself will reflect completely by named modules. It means that in a thing simple, we 
place, we replace all the include to import in a single symbol itself. But there are other codes. A single symbol has two third party libraries, STD modules and SO modules, about STD libraries and SO libraries. We wrap the into name of the modules. And also the uh, library contains two module consumer. One is for the demo example, which tells how to use a single simple. And the other is the unite test, which will um, test the functionality. It is based on G-test. The demo example uses name the modules completely and the unite test uses G-test and everybody whoever uses the G-test know that the G-test uses macros have any, so the test will include the test. United, United States will include the test. And there is some quick profiling to figure out this project as a case, case study. The a single symbol itself without United States, without the party, without demo example, contains 31 files. And it is about 3,300 lines of code. And the unit test contains 10 files and there is 2,500 lines of code. And the demo example contains 13 files and 1,300 lines of code. And the SO library contains 500 plus files and uh, lighting two lines of code. And the uh, status of SD modules is omitted. And then here is about each modules, uh, how to use and where to use. The uh, single simple is used in tests and demo example. And the uh, single simple, what are used from a single simple? There are most templates, the lazy T and the future T and etc. Almost of them are templates. And the, for the SO modules, uh, it is used only in the demo example. Uh, so we didn't use SO in a single symbol and we didn't use SO in the test. Also, I know that SO have a lot of templates too, but what we used are nearly not templates. We use socket, SO socket, and SO IO context, and etc. And for the SD modules, we used it um, heavily. We use it in the a single simple, in the test, in the demo, and the use are a lot of template vector and the list, the data structures, etc. Et but there are other things which are not um, templates. Um, following up is the testing environment. For the compiler, what we use is the downstream implementation for C Um it is a downstream implementation, so the accuracy, the number may be different for what you get from the Solon 13 or the Solon 15, the Solon trunk. Um, the modules code are basically the same. The modules code are basically the same. But I emphasis on the downstream because that there may be a lot of different optimizations and there will may be different handlings in the front end or even in the back end. Uh, especially there is a big change called our back point in the ARVM recently. Uh, so the um, accurate number may be different, but the um, trend, the trend will be remain the same, I think. And the SD library we use as a lib, SDC++ 10.3, and the build system uh, can write and make file, but we kept the concurrency. Yeah, we keep the, uh, we kept the, Dependency by ourselves manually. Uh, and following up with the operating system, we tested this in center OS 4.9. And the hardware, there is uh, there is a 69 cost or cost of CPU, but I guess this might not be so um matters in such a small project, I think. And here is major method. What do we measure? We measure the compression time for demo example and test for modular build and the original build, which we use headers. Since original a single simple is a nearly header only library, 
it takes almost no time to build itself. So we don't compile the time to build a, a simple time, a single simple number of cells. Yeah, because when we modularize it, now you will take some time to build itself, but previously you wouldn't take any time to build itself. So it might not be so um, uh, reasoning. And how do we measure? We measure them with different optimization levels. We always build them with option G enabled since we enable G all the time. I guess this makes sense because when we do this in production or in our production environment, the option G is always enabled. This is to avoid that we get some bugs online and our engineers can debug such binaries online. This may be different in different environments. But I think the processing of debug information should be nearly a ratio concern. I mean, whether or not to enable option G would affect the numbers, but it might not be a big effect on the ratio. And here is the results. Um, for this figure, in the left-hand side, that shows the compile time, and it is shows for the columns. And for the right-hand side, there is compound time change ratio, which is recorded by the gray dot, the gray dot here in the above. And this graph is ranked by the compound time change ratio. And in this example, we can say that everything looks fine in Ozeo. The high speed up is nearly 4.x and looks as a single echo client. Um, before it takes about four seconds to complete. Now with modules, it takes only one second. So we say the speed up is four x since we can get the we can compile four such units um, now, and we can only compile one such unit before. And the average speed up for demo example is two point thirteen two x for demo examples, but for tests tests we get much less improvement. This is obvious and uh, we don't need to measure it, <laughs> yes. And with optimizations, since we'll get much worse. The high speed up is 1.7x now, and it is for chart small demo examples. Uh, yeah, and the average speed up for demo example is about 1.28x. It is um, it is almost the half before. And the results for tests are much worse. None of the tests save time more than 10%. Yeah, we can match worse results. Then here is an analysis. Why demo examples have higher speed up? The reason why is that the test will include uh, headers, but demo example wouldn't uh, include anything. For example, for the figure one, the demo example depends their things by import primarily. The SO tile is a simple SO wrapper which will um, which we implement some simple wrappers and export import SO. And for for the figure two, for the test. We will include the tests, and the tests will include some system headers and some standard headers. So, the so you will not get a lot of speed up since the code in SD are well nipped in the content TU in the content TU right. So this is the first reason. And before the named modules and the headers differences. Another reference is the templates. A single sample provides primary templates. So our tests will test primary templates. And the demo uses mostly non-template templates from ESO. Yeah, also the, also the demo use examples will use templates from a single sample, but you will use some other long template things. So we can get the first conclusion. The speed up from modules depends on the pattern and the usage. Um, what can we know from this? 
uh, if someone someday told me, told you that if we are using modules, we can get 10x speed up or even 100x speed up. Don't be, um, don't be too curious about them. They may not be lying. They may not be lying, but it is maybe because their pattern, their case are too uh, specific or special. They may not be a general case. They may not be a general case. So uh, what is average speed up is still needs more time to explore. Yeah, so the conclusion now is that um, you need to be um, careful when you hear something, when you hear somebody say, I get a lot or not of speed up when I use the modules. It might not be such simple. And the following up, we will test how different modules affect the speed up. Um, this, this, this figure is a complaint time in O2. And in the next most common, that is the original one, which uses headers instead of modules. And in the second column, there is use only a think simple module, but we include SO and STD. And in the third column, we include STD, but we import a single simple and SO module. And in the fourth column, we import everything we can. And from this, we can obviously find that when we import a single simple, uh, the speed up is really not so significant. We get the most significant time decreasement um, from import SO. Yeah. And when we import everything, we get another speed up. So let's use that. Let's use that when we, um, what, what modules can we give me, give us most? It's about the modules that are bigger, that are big and without a lot of templates, right? This is another uh, conclusion. And this is the part three and is the part of part two since we have implemented it actually. And this is an imp implementation called the function reduction, which I implemented in downstream, but I haven't contributed in the upstream. But I guess even I contributed it to the upstream, it wouldn't enable by default due to the requirement or ABI. It will be enabled by option, but um, forget, let's talk, let's talk about it now. The motivation one, why we will get much less speed up wasting optimizations? Why? I have, we have talked about this before. Since optimizer needs to see the function body from other module units. And there is motivation two. There is a combined optimization technique called LTO, which can combine different two together to optimize. Oh, what, what, do, you, what, what do you can get? The first, the motivation one is that why we will lower our speed up because we will connect a different to U. But the motivation two told us that we can get uh, the, we can connect the different TU by, um, by later compilation optimizations. So that is idea. If I, we can enable LTO to uh, refuse to import the function body from the module unit too early. So we can save with the middle end optimizations. Could we? we? Will we get performance loss or can we control the performance loss? We call this behavior, we call this optimization as a function reduction and we implemented it with our downstream compiler. Now here is an example. Um, the compression tie in O2 plus CLTO and O2 plus CLTO plus function reduction, we get much, much better results than the O2 cases. Um, another thought, another note is that people might wondering uh, what is CLTO if you are, to, you are familiar with them. Uh, in our environment, we will use single TO. We will, we will enable single TO all the time with O2 in our project. So the single TO is 
uh, cheap than LTO and you will get a lot of uh, compiler optimizations, will get a lot of company fat. So if you don't use CLTO in your project, I think you can use it. I really suggest it, it's really good. Well, we always enable CLTO in our project with optimizations. Um, but I guess people, I guess the listener will have a immediate question. How about performance? I guess there wouldn't be many people want the fast combination with worst performance. Um, there is the background. Compilers offer many options to control the behavior of CLTO. One is import extra limit, which controls the threshold of nice of instructions the compiler would love to import. The default value for import extra limit is 100. And there are many other options. I just introduced this in this example. Then giving function reduction will lose a lot of functions at the front end. It makes sense to be more aggressive when importing functions in CLTO, right? Because we are more conservative in the early phase. So we can be more aggressive in the later phase. I guess this makes sense. Uh, here is the uh, performance measuring. This is simple. We measure the performance by the QPS of a single simple base HTTP server. And know that the modular right one has higher QPS than O2. We've measured many, many, many times and we still get the result. We suspect the reason may be the change the instruction layout, which causes different instruction cache behavior. But we didn't investigate it anymore and we can prove it. We have no proof. So we can say modules will get bad performance. We can say that. So the concrete here, the concrete here is that the modules won't produce worse performance. Yeah, this is uh, about the original modules, not the function reduction. The key point here, the key point I want to say here is that with import in strand name it, you cost two to 200. The modular right the one get higher QPS than the original one without to import in strand name it. In the second column, say this, the right hand side most origin column is higher than the other blue columns except the right hand side most. What I want to say here is that we can or we may choose the behavior of CLTO to mitigate the performance regression caused by function reduction. Um, the key point here is that it is not to ask people to train, to training, and the concluding here is that uh, we will get bad performance by function reduction, is not, is that we can train. We can control it. We can control it. This is the key conclusion. Um, yeah, then before is the possible improvement we have implemented. And before then is some possible improvement in the future. It will review some potential optimization basis. Uh, the language spec announced the window to discuss the unreached both collections in the global module fragment. Um, if people are not familiar with the global mode fragment, you can imagine, you can uh, vary in this like um, some declarations can be removed out from the pre built module interface. This feature is not implemented yet. So we have potential improvement on code sizes and so the compression speed. Uh, but I, in fact, I have implemented it in a draft implementation. The result is that we can get significant improvement, not like function reduction, and the compression speed wouldn't be a lot of improvement because the unused functions will not be imported. Even they are imported, they will be cleared quickly in the early phases of the optimization passes. 
And in the library side, we can reduce the number of inline functions. Previously, in headers, we will mark some functions as inline functions to avoid multiple deviation error. But this is not necessary anymore in modules. A function defined in module nine won't cause multiple function problems anymore. So it is helpful for the compression speed to remove in that function in modules. So there is another conclusion. If you implement a module-based library, you could remove almost the inline functions. I guess there will be a question. Why the compiler can't ignore inline space fire automatically? Why? Uh, I say this. I said this before because of the API requirement. So the compiler could, couldn't do, couldn't off, couldn't help this. We can, we need to do this manually now. And no two, uh, some developer might know that the function, the member function defined within a class is not is implicitly in line before, before C plus plus twenty. But this change, this change the in name of the modules. Now, if the function is attached to the number of modules, then the member function is not in place in line anymore. And there is another improve, another possible improvement. Given the previous introduction for reasons why the speed up of a template are so not satisfying, we, the readers, the developers may wondering if we can catch something to speed up further. However, from our experiment, it is not so useful. This is a simple example. In the right-hand side, there is implementation for std point example. It exports vector, sort, is sorted and printed. And in the left-hand side, it uses it. The code is simple. We push some element to vector and we saw it and we print if it is sorted. In Ozell, it will take 0.1 second in my measurement. And we can instantiate it, instantiate it at the template inside the module. Look at the nine start from 23, 9, 23, the SDL cache, we have push it, implant back it, sort it, and uh, it is sorted. All the codes are put in the STD point example, we catch the, the, such instantiations. Now, if the consumer remains the same, the code of consumer cons contains the same, the consumer now takes only 0 0.07 seconds to complete, which saves certain percent for the time. Great, isn't it? However, this approach is not scalable. We can, there are a lot of reasons. First, we can predict the usage precisely. This is the first reason. And if we instantiate it a lot of usage, we need a lot of code. It is hard to maintain. And if, even if we, even if we, uh, if we, even if we made it by micro magics, the code sizes will be exported in the end. For the example, the size of the STD example of the object file is from 4K to 15K. Yes, it is 13X larger than before. I guess people wouldn't enjoy this. Generally, we don't care about the spaces generally, but it will be different if you will be much, 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 long, much, much, much larger. It will be different. Also, we generally only ignore it. And the last reason is that speed up is only for such a uh, example in Ozell. The speed up will be reduced with optimization with a larger project. So the conclusion here is that this is a this is a trap. Don't use this track. Then following off is the improvement in the long term. I guess this optimization wouldn't be implemented in short, but this is possible. So I just want to say that we are possible to have a great future. So I just want to say we 
may have a greater future even if we can't get it now. Um, let me start it. It looks a little bit frustrating that we will gain less speed up with some simulations. Can we do anything to improve it without hurting performances? It is possible. As long as we can embed optimized IR in the BMI, so when we generate the IR in the front end, we can import the optimized IR directly instead of generating it from scratch. Then the optimized IR will be posted by the inliner, and all the other optimization will be skipped. But in this way, we should get a much better complexity based up with some optimizations. Just like this diagram shows, a lot of optimizations will be skipped. The optimized IR from full point PM will be simply moved. So this is a key, this is a key secret. Given that the optimizations are expensive, we should get much more speed up in this manner. But I think this might not be able to implement it in short time. Uh, how do you expect performance to change in a use case where there are more transitive dependencies? How do you expect performance to change in a use case where there are more transitive dependencies? Um, I, I'm not sure if I understand your question uh, completely. I, yeah, in this example. Oh yeah, I guess you are talking about this. Um, there are two points front from the internal uh, points for the uh, developer of the compiler. I'm a developer of the compiler, so I can have some internal knowledge. In the from the perspective of, of design, the performance we wouldn't be hurt after we introduce modules from the perspective of design and implementation. And then in this simple example, um, we just verified it and we just tried it. And in fact, what we haven't talked in this talk, we have tested STD modules for the spec 2017, which is a standard performance benchmark. Uh, and we didn't get, uh, and we didn't get uh, the performance loss. So our conclusion is that from the implementation, from the design, and from the benchmark, from the spec 2017, and that simple example, our conclusion is that modules wouldn't affect the performance. So I guess I answer the first question. And uh, you have a third, second question. Uh, let me take it first. Clarification of the above. This use case has a few dependencies and now not of dependencies of dependencies or dependencies or etc. Oh, I see. You say if there are not or not or not of dependencies, the performance wouldn't change. Oh yes, even in the spec benchmark, the spec benchmark wouldn't have a lot of dependencies. They have less dependencies. Uh, so um, the answer from you. Um, from the perspective of implementation and the design, there wouldn't be um, performance regression. But from the perspective of a case study or empirical study, we haven't do such um, studies. Yes. So I guess I so I guess I answer your questions. Uh, 